All right, just a couple things as we continue on, just so everybody sees this. First of all, the master site, so to speak, for all things Android is developer.android.com. All right, it's not android.com. There is, a, there is a domain for that, but I don't, whatever's out there isn't much. Okay, and you'll notice that there is, it's, it's linked here. Their newest version is called Marshmallow, so you're going to get a bunch of that, but there are tutorials under here. There's a bunch of stuff under here that you can get to. All the manual pages and stuff are all in through here. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing, and Amber mentioned this before the break, I've talked to you before about the it-ebooks.info, that site. All right, so this site right here, can't read it. That's it there. And if you want, you can go out there because there are free books. At least for now, they're free. But I can go out there and I can search for Swift, and there'll be some. I've already downloaded, I think it was this. I think it was this one. I don't remember now. No, it's not that. It's not that one either. But they have, uh, there was a book from uh, Pack Publishing, which is one I used, you know, last, uh, I've used the publisher before, and that had some stuff. In fact, that should be Swift, it says there, not iOS. Yeah. But there's also a thing that if you go under there and you type in Android, you'll notice that it'll give you a bunch of stuff for Android. Some people like these books that are called Head First, all right? And they're, they're, they're literally, they're almost all graphical. There's, there's not that much text in them. Some people like them. Some people, it gives them a headache. So, but it's just another thing that you could look through if you wanted some more. All right? All right. So, with where we left off last time, we were right here. Now, a couple, couple more things. The first is... If we go to run this right now, I don't want you to do this, but I want to show you something. If you'd all look up on the screen here, all right? That it, when you run this, it's a little bit different. I can have everything closed. And I right mouse click on here, on my folder name, and I go down to run as an Android app. Everybody hear that? That's how we'll run it in a minute. But before we run it, so before you do that, again, I right mouse clicked on the name of the folder and I chose run as an Android application. All right. But before we do that, right now, by default, we don't have a device hooked up. We have no, does that make sense to everyone? We have no device hooked up to this machine, just this machine. So the system itself supposes that we're using an emulator, but we do not have an emulator set up right now. So we're going to go in and set up an emulator. When you set up an emulator, look at it this way. And I'm, I'm being very general here, but it's as though somebody set up a device for us that was a certain size. You know, maybe a Nexus 10 or something like that that maybe is, you know, 3 inches by 2 inches or something like that. You get the idea. Or 2 by 3, whatever it is. And it's kind of like the system, you know, the, it takes a snapshot of that. And that's what it will run your thing under. All right? But to do that, unless this has changed, John is you've got to go under Run, Window, oh, okay, you're right, Window, and you've got to go down to Virtual Device Manager. So you can do that right now if you would. Click Window and go down to Android Virtual Device Manager. Unless, you're going, unless you want to have multiple emulators, you'll only have to do this once. And you shouldn't need multiple emulators because as soon as we set the tablets up, and pass those out, you'll probably be, you know, I would recommend the first time you run it, run it through the emulator. Just see what it looks like. Then if you're hooked up to the tablet, it'll recognize that from here too. You can just choose the tablet. All right, so I've got that highlighted. I'm going to click. All right, why is this gray right now? Well, I know you know, but why is this gray right now? Because we don't have any emulator, right? So the only thing that's not grayed out is create. So you could probably guess the one that we're going to click. Create. If you look up on the screen here, you'll notice that about half the stuff that you see here 
has got drop downs. So for instance, for device, I can choose any of these. I do have to give it a name. I don't know, are we still going to go with Nexus 10? Or Nexus 1? Yeah, right, Nexus 1. So I'm going to call mine. I would recommend that when you're naming these things, don't put any blank spaces in there. And I don't care how many times I tell you, and I, I'll, I'm not making fun of him, but it's easy to because he's not here. But Travis is the best example. The guy still, no matter how many times I say, do not put spaces in here, he still puts spaces in there. That, and he's another one of those guys, and I, I, I mean, he's a terrific guy, and he's got so much talent. But I've told him before, you need a dictionary. Okay? So, I'm calling my Nexus 1. N-E-X-U-S with a number one there. They're not really case sensitive, but that's just the name it's going to save it under. Now for the device, I'm going to click the drop down here. And am I going to choose the Nexus one? That would make sense then, right? So if that bugs you and you go, wait a minute, you call that one Nexus one and this one is at Nexus O-N-E, then change the name of it. But don't have a blank space like they have in here. All right. You can see the dimensions that it's going to have, too. This is going to emulate a device, a 3.7-inch, what is that? It's a phone, then, probably, I guess. All right. So I'm going to choose that. Boom. Now that's done. Next, it asks me for the target. And I'm going to, I'm going to take a wild guess and say we're going to choose that one. So we want Android, you know, etc. For the CPU... We still want ARM? All right. Uncheck. uncheck this. Everybody see this? Where it says hardware, keyboard, present, you can just uncheck that for now. All right. And with this one, too, don't choose Intel Atom there because it's, it's for basically a different kind of setup. So make sure you've got ARM chosen there. I think there's always only been the two choices, I believe. All right, under skin, do we want no skin? Uh, dynamic. Dynamic, all right. So just choose the top one. The front camera is grayed out. We don't care about it. We don't care about a back camera. We're not, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, it's always been my hope that let's say we go through this. And now, you know, the other book I'm considering using is by the same author. So it's, I think it's set up the same way. They haven't sent it to me yet, all right? But I think it's set up the same way. So if we... That one I'm, I'm more apt to use, all right? But if we use one or if we use both of those, maybe Eric, for example, says, wow, I'd like to really, you know, create my own app next semester. I'd like to do something with cameras. Then you can read that and you can do that. Then you set this up any way you want to. But for now, we're just keeping it as generic, as vanilla, whatever you want to call it, as we can. Now, do we have to change anything else that's in here? No. All right. So in other words, yours should look like this. What this is going to do, as you probably guess, all right, as you probably guess, we're going to click the OK button. This is going to create an emulator for you. What you have to do before you, you run your program is the emulator has to be up and running. Did you hear that? That said, there'll be at least one person who will forget to do that. If not today, on another day. And if you don't, I will. All right? It'll happen. Not only that, the, these emulators may come up and may be ready, fa some faster than others. It's just, I, it's a crapshoot, for lack of better words. All right? So, now, when I click OK, notice after I click OK, it'll sit and spin for a bit. There. Now it shows it. See that? So now I can, if I wanted to create another one, I can go through the same process. I don't want to. But now I can click on here, and I can tell it to start. And since I was smart enough this time to listen to John and have him talk to you about the log cat and everything else, this is where if you, if you expand this, the log cat, you'll be able to see that as it's starting. And ideally, again, sometimes a little bit of it will show red, but ideally it will almost all show green. That's green is good. Don't necessarily that red is bad, but red typically means there might be some kind of a problem. All right. So I'm going to tell it to start. Okay. Now we've got this. And it says, 
you know, skin, 480 by 800, density, et cetera. Do we want to scale it to the real size? I don't think so. And there, uh, yeah, but I just want to say this. This wipe user data, last semester we pretty much had to do it because sometimes what happened was it was, it, like, like Adrian mentioned this morning, it was building a bunch of stuff, and every time you start it up, it would build it again. But instead of overwriting the old one, it would put it right next to the old one. And people were running out of room. But, okay, I'll, I'll defer to John. He says, that just leave it the way it is, and then just click launch. All right. Now, it's a little weird, unless this has changed. This will come up, and it'll start running, okay? And you'll see what happens. So it tells you starting that emulator, boom, it's up and running. Okay. Now, do we still have to close this? Um, yeah, you can close that, but wait for the, the emulator to show up on the taskbar. All right. So down here on the taskbar, that emulator should eventually show up. When it does, you can literally click the X. Okay. And the reason that that's important is if you don't do that, typically. When you try to run the program, that will all be grayed out. Because it says, oh, you're not done working with setting up your emulator. So it tries to protect you from you, for lack of better words. All right. <clears throat> also, if you notice up here, see that? You don't see anything on yours, which means that it created the thing OK. Occasionally, you might create an emulator, and you might forget to, to set up one of the settings. <laughs> And if that's the case, you might have the red X or the, the thing over here, which typically that, that's what it means. Either you, you put some kind of an option in there that the system didn't understand, or you, you just forgot something. Now there's coming up. Yours is? Yours is coming up. Oh, yeah, now it's yours. We got one that ran out of space. You might I might want to try hitting your start button. All right. See, you're not the only one. That's what the emulator looks like. All right, you might have seen it on your screen already. But just so you know, all right, just so you know, what this means is this is what's going to run. When we run our program, it's going to run on, this will be our interface. Does that make sense to people? All right. But it's weird unless, again, unless this has changed. What's going to happen is when you actually start to run your program, all right, you, you, you sit there and you'll wait and you'll wait and you'll wait and you'll wait, and then you'll wait a little bit more. And then, all right, it's better than it was last time. Last Last semester, when you first started to run these, you might have had to wait up from 15 to 20 minutes, literally. But is it still the key thing? It's been about four minutes. But is it still the, the thing with the key on it? Yes. All right. So I want to I want to run this now and show you, hopefully at least, what it's going to look like. There it says Android. Boom. Everything's cool. So now I can close this, and I can close this. All right. So like I showed you before, I'm going to right mouse click on the folder. I'm going to choose Run As, and I'm going to choose Android Application. Right, you have to wait for the emulator to fully start. You have to get that lock screen first on the emulator. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So John's saying that it's been a while. <laughs> Don't do that yet. This What's going to come up in here, you're going to get a circle, and the circle is going to literally have a picture of a lock in it, you know, like an old-fashioned padlock. You're going to see that. Once we get that, then we're able to go and run the program. All right. A lot of lot of work to just have it say hello world on the screen. I understand. But I'd like to create the first app that would maybe mean a little bit more. We'll do that next time. All right. Oh, and yeah. At this point, if you look at your log pad, it should be scrolling. There's nothing in there. But remember, originally when I did it, I got that thing that said that I didn't have any room.
I'll give this a couple more minutes and see if it does anything. And if it doesn't, then I'll have to go back and try to make changes to it. For the rest of you, if eventually you get this screen, and then this screen has like, be, the, like a, a circle, and it'll have like a lock, literally like a padlock. You click on that lock and drag it out to the edge. All right, and when you drag it out to the edge, it'll, like, it'll almost look like it's glowing. Then the program should start to run. Did you find out yet, Mike, when are you going to need off and when you're going to need off? Uh, yeah, but I'm going to be there, but don't, I don't know when it is yet. They haven't said. But both his daughters are in Rockford, which is where uh, he lives, so I can't imagine it's going to be too long. Last thing that I'll tell you today is if, if you look up on the screen here, um, the other document that I did for you, printed out, whatever you want to say, I just had it up, but I must have removed it. It's, it's the one that says it's got the real long title on it. This one right here. All right? So this is... The, Basically, we've gone through all these steps. All right, this is the other one. So step one shows you how to create a project. Step two shows you how to configure the project settings. Pages two and three. Page four talks about the launch app. Page five about the create activity. Page six about the new blank activity. You click finish. They talk about the overall project structure like I already did here on page 8. On page 9, they show you a picture of your tool palette and what your screen should look like. On page 10, they have a little bit, 10 and 11, on the code. All right, then they show you the run configuration and they show you how to set up the emulator on pages 12 and 13. They show you an example for an emulator on page 14. It's a different one, but just so you see it. On page 15, they show you how to do the run and what the output should look like when you get done. All right. I know there was a lot of repetition between these, but I thought there might have been something in one that wasn't in the other. I like the verbiage in the other one better because this one's just pictures. All right. So what I'm hoping that we're able to do, all of us, including me, whether or not you even get this running today, is next time we'll create a very simple app, all right? And we'll do something along the lines of, rather than having it say hello, okay, we'll do something along the lines of, um, we'll put like a label and then we'll put a text box. You'll put your name in the text in the text box, you know, you'll run it, you'll click a button, and then we'll have another label and it'll say hello followed by your name, or something like that. So it'll be really, really simple, all right? Then we'll, the next one we'll probably do after that is kind of the quintessential one that I've done. And that's like, we'll do like a guessing game type of thing. You've done that before because you've done it in Java, I believe. I know you've done it in at least one or two languages. So we'll do that. All right, again, any program that we do as a class, it'll be expected that you turn that in. All right. And for those people who end up watching the tapes but aren't here for various reasons, they're still going to be expected to do that stuff. I know it's very difficult if you know we got we've got people who have jobs and we have other stuff that well I don't have a, I don't have a Mac I understand that and we're dealing with that as best we can. Alright. Yeah, this isn't gonna come up I don't yeah, think. It should have been up and running. Yeah. Right so, mm -hmm. Oh, you hear that, John? Eric's did just come up. I'd rather have yours work than mine, and I'm being serious. I really would. 
That's fine. As long as you get to the stream with the five down and clear it, you should. And you probably see that process system is responding. I, I think that's related to the virtual desktop. So you just say, okay, it goes away. I don't know if this is even going to work, but I'm going to try to start this again. And if I get the error, I'm going to see if it'll do a screen capture for me. So I can send that to him to let him know that even though we did everything, it may not be work. Whoops, it may not be working correctly for everybody. Again, restarting your virtual desktop will probably help too. Well, you mean just start it again now? I mean, you know, restart your entire. Oh, the the virtual. You mean the virtual desktop? The, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, I can do that. That's not a problem. It's not like I've got a lot of stuff running on here. That would be it. Have you started your recent, restarted your recent? Uh, I did last last Thursday, I think it was. Oh. I, I'm trying to at least once a week and sometimes more often than that. So. As I've been restarting mine like on Friday after I, or before I leave for the yeah. weekend. That way when I come in Monday morning. And Eric, I don't know if you heard that before, but for this, the handouts that I gave you, if you go out to app, appcoda.com and you put in there, learn Swift, the first five chapters are in there. And what I did was like, for example, for chapter two, we just did, we went through one and two today. I removed the graphics from the, the handout I gave you because, I mean, that's just a waste to me. But the bad thing is, sometimes there's screenshots, but I remove those too because they, they, they get distorted. When you when you copy this and run them off, so they look real huge. So, this is, this is from the other book. Then this is from the book I'm showing you right here. That's from the Appcoda book. When I get the other book too for the the uh, Android one, I'll bring that in. 